And I'll tell you, Quentin Borison, just one of the most unique individuals you'll ever want to meet out here, gets as much joy winning a figure eight race as he does digging up a bottle out of, from six foot under the ground. He's just really one of the super people. And uh, talking about super, this is going to be a fun one. So good to see these guys back out. Jeff, we were talking about these guys earlier, the type of cars that they have. Tons of horsepower, and it's all on the ground coming up. Tons of horsepower and tons of creativity and ingenuity. Yep. These are outlaw figure eights, folks. These cars are awesome because they are all built specifically for this application. Exactly. That's what they're designed to do, and they do it so well. And as you can see on the screen right now, absolutely beautiful. In the number 48 on the front row, a longtime official going for his rookie of the year in this division, and that is Jay Van Buskirk. Outside of Jay in the number 71 is Nick Holden. Nick Gunderson in the 33, a 2018 champion. Keith Taylor in the 3M. And we're going green. We'll still keep bringing him to you. Zach Larson in the 80. Doug Wilkinson in the 55. The 50 car is is John Cowboy Carlson outside of him there. Great picture. The 676 right there of Ricky the Kid Dietz. The zero of Jillian Lapato and number 74 of Chris Curtis. Lots, several champions in this race. The 2017 champion is behind the wheel of the Boney Brothers who have been in this division forever uh, in that owns that number 74 car that Chris Curtis is driving. Ricky Dietz uh, in the 676. By this current champion defending in a what I believe um, and I'll find out for sure as we see a car spun there in uh, turn number three right in the middle we'll give him a minute to try and get that thing fired up but with the amount of smoke coming out I think that thing may be done that yellow on the track here going to yellow there for I can't still see the number I'm thinking it might be the 3M of Keith Taylor and that kind of yes right. it is you it can kind of see yep. it on the on the uh, now they call those things I believe they call them sailboards the the things and there are some figure eight cars that have those things and there's been a couple I think that have raced out here at Evergreen in years past where they'll put a four to six foot tall plexiglass sideboard on that thing. It's yeah, absolutely. And these days, they're offered good money to be uh, the plexiglass at the grocery store yeah. between the cashier and the, the customer. They are an, an amazing class. So cool to see. And I'm, I'm really glad to see Jay Van Buskirk out here. As, uh, you know, he's been a part of this Speedway forever. And I can only imagine what it must be like for him to be in this car first time. Absolutely. Being an official for so long and then getting an opportunity to get behind the wheel. Man, there's nothing better than All that. All right. Let's get back to it. As we are getting him wound up, we'll see if Kevin Guthrie is going to give him one more time around. And uh, Nick Gunderson, that's another one to keep an eye out. Now, Gundersons, they are down out of the Auburn area. And they build a lot of these they cars. These That's cars. their business. Yeah, they build these cars, and they're not just builders of cars. They're artists. Yes. Um, artisans, I should call them. They're yeah. phenomenal race car builders. Yeah, if we get a close-up shot. Green is out here. Green is out. Oh, got a little there sketchy on the outside, but pulled it back in. You get to take a look at that number 33. It should be just coming around the corner right there. That is uh, Zach Larson in that number 80. And that's a, a, a full-on Gunderson car. Obviously, Nick behind the wheel of one of his. And and all it does is give them, and they build cars for customers all across they the do. country, exactly. too. Gunderson Speed Shop does. And uh, what better way to test out your product than just going out and killing it on a Saturday night in Monroe, Washington? Absolutely. Chris Curtis in the 74 car, getting a lot of positions. There he is on the inside right there as they go across the X. Chris Curtis, just one of the nicest, sweetest people you'll ever want to meet, too. He's just a joy to be around. And it, it's so amazing. You would think that these guys with the amount of horsepower just no more than about a foot ahead of them when they're inside that car. Uh, they, believe it or not, given what they do as a hobby, probably some of the most level-headed people you'll ever want to meet. Yeah, right behind Chris there, you got Doug Wilkinson in the 55. That's the brother of who we saw uh, last mm -hmm. race in the this, in this Superstock figure eights. Yep, Doug Wilkinson has been in this game a long time, too. You saw him last week on 
our home track hero show in the Northwest Pro Four Trucks. So yeah, it's in the bloodline in the Wilkinson family as we're working lap number seven with Nick Gunderson in that in the lead with uh, Ricky Dietz uh, in the second spot as they are continuing to work their way around. I would love to know, and I, I don't like to guess on horsepower and stuff like that, but these guys typically, and, and you running super late models and going to be in the pro late model division this year, um, these are pretty equivalent to the to the horsepower oh, that yeah, you guys absolutely. run. Absolutely. These motors are, they're, they're big motors. They got to be pushing out 600 plus horsepower and uh, they can get with it. Yeah, they do. You see the number 50 of the Cowboy John Carlson, longtime campaigners. We're starting to get close to the world's most dangerous intersection. You can see it right in the middle of your screen right now as the cars are starting to get a little bit more spaced out. But uh, up front, it is still Ricky Dietz now in the lead in that gorgeous number 676. The vinyl jobs in these things. There you see uh, Nick Gunderson in his familiar number 33 Gunderson speed shop entry. Uh, just so happy to see these guys back out on the track. And when there was back in the day, you know, when we talk about this a lot, back when the 60 Minutes of Fear was a really big deal and the figure eight nationals, when you would have guys from all over the West Coast coming up to Evergreen Speedway, that's how uh, popular and how valued getting a win in one of those two feature races in the calendar year are for this to be. Yeah, these cars being the class that they are, there's groups all around the United States. And I know a lot of our local drivers here at Evergreen Speedway will travel back to Indy and race figure eights there. Yeah. And there is some wild car counts and some really competitive racing. Yeah. And and we always finish right, right up at the top of the leaderboard. Oh, yeah. We're always competitive wherever we go as a group. Yeah, they run these guys down at Irwindale yes. in, in the Indy Speedrome uh, where they have a three-hour figure eight race from start to finish and they stop the clock too believe it or not uh, it's, it's just nuts what these guys do and how far they will go to, to put on a show for the fans and to, to prove to others because you know we're not going to kid you guys there's a lot of testosterone behind the wheel of these things and these guys oftentimes feel that they've got a lot to prove and guys like Gunderson and guys like Zach Larson and, and the Cowboy Dietz is they'll, they'll travel all over the West Coast if they have the opportunity and can kind of get the funding to do it but uh, these cars are not cheap to run as we're coming up on the halfway point here lap number 15 of our 30 lap main event here uh, Good battle for second there. Oh. oh, looks like Dietz got turned out of the lead there. He, oh, oh, and look at that. He gets Just got there. smacked by the 55 of Wilkinson as he uh, puts on a little smoke show, gets it back underway, but it looks like we're going to bring up the completely caution. see what happened there going into turn one. I just know that Dietz all of a sudden uh, touched that uke tire there and the boundary of the track got turned around. Just got flipped around and, and uh, as we... Uh, Spindle. Really good battle, though, going Boy, on for no second kidding. right there with Chris Curtis and Gunderson. They yeah. were duking it out, nose to tail, putting some metal to each other. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle here as we yeah. get going green again. These guys are not afraid to get into each other, and for as long, and they campaign a lot together so they know what they're capable yeah, of. Yeah, and while their cars are works of art, they will knock the nose off <laughs> them in a heartbeat. They certainly will. Okay, let's get them lined back up here, get them uh, another parade lap. It looks like we're going to give them. And we'll get this thing yeah. back underway. You see Nick Gunderson in the 33 there, the 2018 champion. And that's going to put... Uh, yeah, Chris Curtis is there in second, and uh, it looks like... John Carlson? It might be John Carlson there yep. in the third spot. All right, we're back green flag, and a nice start by Nick Gunderson in that 33, and a great side-by-side -side battle just coming out in between turns one and two. It always took a, quite a while to get used to the, the corner configuration in this division, but uh, it's uh, now it's it's like normal stuff to us. But uh, as they come out of turn number four, the start finish line right at this as they come out of turn number four. But single file now here on lap 17. Yeah, the 676 there, Ricky the Kid Dietz here, halfway through, leading the race, getting turned. Going to have to regroup, going to have to get reset, kind of mm -hmm. get his mind right so he can get back up on the wheel, try to pick up some more spots here before the end of this thing. So good to see that guy back behind the wheel, too. He has just become such a good friend over the years and, and always really, when we've had him on the radio shows that we've done over the years, he's always just been so eloquent and such a supporter of this division. And at the cool part about Rick, too, is that he knows uh, what his family means to this speedway. They, they just got a great history here. Absolutely. You can see him there trying to get underneath that Gunderson-built car. 
while Nick Gunderson continues to lead this thing. Oh, getting a little traffic there at the X. Had to slow yeah, up a little trying bit. trying to see in that. That's one of the super stock figure eight cars that you just kind of saw going through the X there. It almost looks like Eric Allison, who kind of got out early in this Monroe Grocery Outlet super stock figure eight main event. But it looks like he might be coming out. Got the thing fixed. Maybe just doing a shakedown. So we see the 48 car of Jay Van Buskirk uh, going the wrong way in between turns uh, three and four on our figure eight course. Looks like he's trying to fire it up, but it just may not cooperate with him. And uh, you know, the one, the one car that, that was truly revolutionary in this division uh, was the uh, Seth Funden car that brilliantly, I mean, you could spot that thing if you were on another planet, it was so green, but it was one of the more legendary outlaw figure eight cars because it was fuel injected. One of the very first mm. of its kind in the country. Absolutely. And it Absolutely. won a championship too. Well, we're under caution here with 10 to go. And uh, with 10 to go and you're under caution, these guys are, uh, this next restart is really important. And we'll Gunderson. be back after these messages here at Evergreen Speedway.